myself, I'm Dave, and uh, my, my colleague Tony is also on the call, so we'll be uh, available to answer questions after um, the presentation section. Uh, but uh, I've already logged on to the Biodata Catalyst powered by Seven Bridges platform. So what I want to do is give you a tour of some of the features and try to highlight some of the, the differentiators just like Tiffany did. So when you log on to this URL, um, and by the way, I'm just in a Chrome web browser, if you're wondering. Um, the only requirement is, is a modern web browser to access the platform. When you log on, you'll see your most recent projects on the left side, which you can search. And on the right side, you'll see your most recent analyses, uh, which you can also search via keyword. So I made us a project called Community Showcase, which I'm going to give you a tour of. But first, I want to show you how you can quickly make a project for yourself. If you just click create a project, you can give the project a name, which creates a URL which you can bookmark um, for later use and that's private only to you. Then you select a billing group. So I'm gonna use the trainings and demos billing group which Seven Bridges employees have access to. If you're a new user, you'll automatically have a pilot funding billing group to get funds added to this billing group, you'll need to request those from NHLBI. And in the next section, Paul is gonna go over just how you can do that. Um, Tiffany mentioned um, a bit about this. So Seven Bridges can uh, do compute and data storage on AWS as well as Google. So it's something to consider. You have that flexibility there. If you're going to be collaborating with Terra or sharing data with, uh, with your project on Terra, uh, we recommend um, synchronizing uh, on the Google platform. Uh, as well as you can, of course, attach data that you already have stored on either location using the Seven Bridges Volumes feature. There are some other options which I won't have time to go into, but these are additional uh, features to help you save funding um, as well as um, have some flexibility in your project. So uh, I'm gonna jump over to the showcase project. So when you make a new project, you'll have uh, a description here, which you can go ahead and take notes over top of. That's just text right there. Along the top, you have access to your project files, your project apps, your analysis tasks. And on the right side, you'll be able to act access some interactive analysis, which I'll tell you about later, as well as some settings, such as changing the project billing group, et cetera. The project, uh, when you make a new project, you're the owner of it. Uh, but if you want to collaborate, you can easily do that by inviting new members. So I'll invite my colleague, Tony, who's on the call today. And as I invite uh, new members, um, I can fine tune their permission. So um, let's say I want to give Tony uh, write ability and copy ability, but I don't want him to add any new analysis steps. I could give him write and copy. All right, and then he'll appear here on the membership panel. So um, there are multiple ways to add data to your project. Um, and Tiffany went over some of those. Uh, you, you, of course, can upload your data, or you could add them from um, other products in the ecosystem. There's a built-in feature on Seven Bridges called the Data Browser. And this is a way for you to interactively browse the top mid hosted data sets that are hosted in the NHLBI cloud buckets. So um, this is a way to, as Tiffany mentioned, be able to link uh, the data uh, using pointers. So you don't have to actually copy the data over, it'll just be linked back to the NHLBI cloud buckets. So in this data browser, we have the top med studies organized by disease type, so heart, lung, blood, sleep. And then, and then there's also a section for uh, the combined exchange area files and the 1000 Genomes Project open data, which is great for testing. All of these are hosted um, by NHLBI. So let's say I wanted to look at the Framingham study. I would just type in Framingham, and uh, it would give me a couple options under heart disease. I can access the parent study, and I can access the genomic study. So if I wanted to explore the genomic data, I would just click Explore 1 selected which would open up this graphical query. So if I wanted to uh, filter down, so it's, it's currently saying I have 3,700 3, BCF files. 
I can further um, refine that by looking for freeze eight data, for example, and refresh the file count. This will give me 46. Now let's say you wanted a specific consent group. You could add a consent group that you had access to. So for example, um, consent group one here, this will give me access to the 23 multi sample VCF files at this point uh, in consent group one. At this point, I could link the pointers to my project. This is where the platform is going to programmatically check your dbGaP credentials to make sure you have the appropriate access level for this particular study. Uh, today, I'm just going to show you some 1000 genomes open data. So back in our project, we have a, in the files tab, I've added um, some folders so you can organize your data in folders. Um, you can search by file type. So I've added 22 uh, VCFs that are based on the 1000 genomes open data set. These are just subsets of some of the, the genotypes here. So um, you can search through them uh, very quickly here. So once you've situated your data, the next thing to do is to um, find software. Now, Tiffany already mentioned that DocStore is part of the ecosystem and is a great way to not only import data, or sorry, import apps, uh, but is also um, a great way to share your pipelines after um, you've maybe tailored or created new pipelines. In the Seven Bridges platform, we have a public apps gallery. So these are apps that have been developed by Seven Bridges engineers and they're organized by category. So uh, I've, let's say we want to do a genome-wide association test today. I selected the GWAS category and I have all of these cards that are popping up. I can click on any of the cards and it'll give me a description of what the tool does, how long it'll take to run and how, how many cloud credits it, it um, should take based on the file input size. So I previously uh, selected some, some tools to do a, a genome-wide as, uh, association test, and I pointed them and linked them to the apps tab. So I have these three that are copied from the public apps gallery, which I can run one by one, but let's say I wanted to run them all as one pipeline and maybe tailor some of the parameters. Uh, we can do that inside your project by um, creating a new workflow. So this morning I made a um, workflow called Genesis Single Variant Association Test with the VCF conversion and fitting a null model. And this is what it looks like here. So it has the conversion and fitting the null model. Those outputs get put right into the association test. The workflow creates plots and summary statistics. So to get to the editor, from an app, you would just click edit and that would open up the uh, workflow editor canvas. So when you run an analysis task, it takes you to the tasks page. And this will give you a list of all the um, analysis that you've done, uh, the duration, as well as the um, cost. Uh, when you run an analysis, it'll start you off in a draft task and you'll fill in the appropriate files on the left side and you can specify some app settings, including covariates uh, in this example, um, outcome, column, et cetera. When it's complete, when your analysis is completed, you'll be able to say, see those file inputs, the app settings, as well as the outputs, many of which you can view just by opening up uh, right on the platform. Uh, in particular, HTML files and images uh, display really nicely, so you don't have to download them. Finally, I want to mention um, interactive analysis. So a lot of researchers want to fine tune their plots and get them ready for manuscript publication. Maybe they want to munge data or um, test out new uh, packages. So we can do that in the interactive analysis tab. So uh, I've spun up actually three pieces of software, SAS Studio, RStudio, and JupyterLab, just to show you that you can have more than one of them going at the same time. So SAS is the latest option we have, uh, which lo would look like SAS as if you ran it locally. Um, so you can go ahead and um, open, up, uh, open up the files um, in your web browser. Um, 
and then um, import them in SAS if you're working with clinical data. Uh, RStudio is another option, of course. So in particular, the Genesis workflows, uh, those are outputting R data files, which you can open up in RStudio, make plots and save them back to your project. So um, that was a quick tour. Um, so I'm gonna flip back to the slide deck. Thank you, Amber. So just in summary, some of the differentiators uh, for Seven Bridges is that the tools that I showed you are actually written in common workflow language. So you can find those in DocStore or in the public apps gallery on the Seven Bridges platform. Uh, the cloud providers that are available currently are Amazon Web Services or Google Cloud Platform, GCP. But of course you can connect um, data volumes that you may already have on the cloud to the platform. One application that's uh, unique to the Seven Bridges is the Annotation Explorer. So this is a great way to uh, browse the top med uh, data annotation. So you can actually browse through 8 billion variants and up to 700 annotations uh, using an interactive uh, web page. So this is a great, uh, great way to filter down uh, for SNPs that you're interested in um, pre, pre GWAS and create aggregate units to run a an aggregate GWAS, as well as post um, GWAS, you can use those for uh, annotation. Uh, SAS um, is a new feature on, on the platform, but of course you have um, RStudio and Lab as well. So uh, thank you for your time.